much. And all of our scholars, you know, just give a shout out to you, uh, those who are watching us live by way of YouTube right now or whatever social media platform you're on, or even if it's our television broadcast, which would be airing this message uh, uh, live, not live, but in time to come. Whenever it's airing, we just say hello to you and shalom. All right. So we're going to uh, we're talking about why prayer is necessary. We're teaching uh, a vein of kingdom keys or kingdom concepts of successful prayer we started on. And we're going to hit some of those points. We'll also uh, have our book out now, uh, uh, Kingdom Keys, uh, Concepts of Prayer. Concepts of Prayer. And I think the marketing ministry uh, may have, uh, I had it in my hand, but I put it somewhere. But anyway, we we got it out. You know, it's a, a study uh, guide, a study tool, and give you some keys and principles that will e e equip you with the tools you need to be effective in prayer. So prayer is necessary, and some people don't pray. That's going to be another section we're going to teach why people don't pray. But one of the main reasons people don't pray is because they are not successful when they do pray, you see. And then you have a religious prophet will come up with these utterance such as, well, the uh, delay is not necessarily denial. He may not come when he when you want him to, but he's right, always right on time. See, all of these are prophecies that are being uttered by a religious prophet. They have no substance to them. They are pacifiers, band-aids to cover up a lack of knowledge of the kingdom and not knowing how to pray. Now, uh, I always ask this question. I'm going to ask it again. Tell me why prayer is necessary. We must petition uh the father. We must petition the father so that his will can get done on earth, just like it is in heaven. That's the only way it's going to happen through prayer. We are the legal agents in the earth. We have legal rights. See those those two basic kingdom concepts: restoring man to his righteousness, giving man his dominion back, so man can manifest the father's will on the earth mankind is the legal agent in the earth and a concept are the ideals and thoughts that form our belief system that we receive ideas and thoughts that we receive that form our belief system that's what that's what concept so uh our belief system is based on this we have been restored back to righteousness we have our dominion back now what you're sure prayed and what he told us to pray the first principle precept that he gave us to pray when he was teaching the scholars was your will be done in the earth just as it is in heaven that only can be done through a legal being in the earth created by the father given authority by the father who created the earth and gave the earth to this legal being to rule, dominate, and manage it, asking the father to do that. The father cannot do it on his own. He must have someone in the earth legal to take care of that. And that's going to take us into point number five. Uh, Elohim will not violate his delegated authority in the earth. We're going into our notes. Point number five. Elohim, we have seven points on why prayer is necessary the fifth point is Elohim would not violate his delegated authority in the earth. We are his delegated authority. We have our position of righteousness back with him as relates to our relationship with him. See, relationship is very important. Once a relationship is established, then we communicate through fellowship. A lot of people will say, I know where I'm going when I die. I'm going to heaven when I die. But they have no fellowship, have no communication other than religion speaking to them and telling them certain things, how to live. And they formulate their own system of righteousness and their own system of living. I talked to someone just recently. I told them, if, if uh, uh, the way you live in now, if you were to die, Today, where will you go? Oh, I go to heaven. I said, for real? 
I thought you was joking. I said, for real. I'm talking about pimp player now. <laughs> pimp player. I said, for real? Yeah, you know, because I, I got that right, you know, because it's all about, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a good person. I do right things and stuff like that. I said, you do a lot of terrible, evil, wrong things, too. What you going to do about that? Uh, well, you know, you know, I I think you take that one. Talk. I think and I feel and I say, you know what? You are a very, very religious person. You are one of the most religious persons. Two, three, ten, twenty that I've met because I met a bunch of. Them. And I explained to him that all these things you are saying are formulated on your own opinion. It's not based on these concepts. It's not based on your position of righteousness that you are in violation of by your lifestyle. It's not based on your dominion that you have received back to, from the father to dominate your life. You won't have to do illegal stuff to gain wealth and stuff like that if you are dominating, dominating your life circumstances. You, you don't have to resort to getting high to feel good. You don't be having to have sex to release dopamine, listen to music to release dopamine. You don't have to do all these things if you're dominating your circumstance in your life. You have to do these things because you are not dominating because you don't understand dominion. So really, you don't have the basic key concept. Talk to another gentleman about the same thing. And he was glad to listen. Kept on the phone an hour and a half. I ready to go. I had stuff to do. My wife said, you sure was out there a long time. You know, I was out in, in the home gym out back. And uh, I said, well, I didn't even know it. I just, I, I just, you know, he was pulling on me and he wanted to hear. And I kept giving him truth and he kept pulling, kept giving. And look, bro, I got to go. <laughs> you know, we be on them Thursdays, the weekends, we have teaching session, we got this. Just, just come to this and I promise you'll get a lot. And I have no problem talking with you. Because I, I never want people to be afraid to approach me and talk to me about things. That's why I didn't tell him. Somebody else snitched on me. I didn't tell him I was I was a pastor. Never told him nothing. I never did. All right, Dr. Renee, go right ahead. On that last point, when you um, stated Elohim will not violate his delegated authority, could you qualify and uh, say who that delegated authority is um, because the scripture in uh, all of Timotheus 2 and 1 that talks about all in authority you know how that one is misconstrued can you just qualify who is considered his delegated authority okay we'll pull that scripture up she's making reference to because uh, there is one also in Roman M 13 where it's a all authority that exists is of Elohim. All right. And I would believe it or not, I'm, I'm getting to that. That's in, in the, we coming in, going right into that. So let's go back to our notes. She had the question for others because I know she know, but let's go back to our notes. Then we're going to uh, go to uh, be, uh, Aleph Timotheus 2, 1 through 2. But Elohim will not violate his delegated authority in the earth. Now, the first thing we need to understand is this. Barashi 126, the father gave mankind dominion in the earth. Uh, in Tehillim, uh, the uh, heavens belong to the Lord, the earth he have given to the children of men. Uh, Tehillim uh, 24, the earth is the Lord, the fullness they, thereof, and they that dwell therein. By creative rights, everything belonged to him, but he created the earth and then created man to dominate and govern the earth. He delegated authority in the earth to man. When he said they have dominion, you know, the, the, the translation said let them have dominion. But you look in the Hebrew, it'll just say he created man his own image, own likeness, dominate the earth. Rada in the Hebrew. Rule, manage, govern the earth. This is why I created you to rule, manage, and govern the earth. When he said that he delegated his authority to mankind in the earth. Man is the only legal agent in the earth. That's what happened. Okay. Now, you uh, there's a principle of kingship, and that is, and the principle of rule that cannot be broken. Two kings never dominate the or rule the same territory. As it relates to a king. A king owned everything in his territory. 
Now we're dealing with a king who created everything and by creative rights, he owned everything. A principle of a kingship is this, a king can give any of his territory, wealth and resources in his territory, give to whomever he choose. That's why Yeshua said, you didn't choose me. I chose you and appointed you. He was actually making reference to the beginning where, whereas we made you in our image and our likeness by way of choice. Then we created an earth and put you here in this earth, gave you a mandate, gave you an appointment, gave you dominion to bring fruit in the earth, evidence, spirit of life, other human beings in our image, our likeness, who would do the same thing. You see, so by having that key concepts, those two key concepts, when you study over in the Messianic writings, many uh, 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 truths that Yeshua would state were already stated in a Tanakh. You know, I chose you. You didn't choose me. Well, and because it, it don't sound right, because he said, whosoever will come to me. So we have to make the choice to get born again. Now, are you telling me that I you only chose certain people to be born again? No. He was making reference back to Bereshit when he created us and created us for a purpose. So he's making reference to human beings whom he gave delegated authority to. You remember uh, the human beings in turn gave that delegated authority to Satan. All right. Now let's go to, uh, be, be, I mean, I left Timotheus. And then we got a scripture on our notes we're going to go to and we're going to deal and validate that Satan had legit authority that was given to him. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and all of these particular prayers we're talking about here, they, we have them in our, our study guide in our prayer, uh, that book dealing with kingdom concepts that we have out now. Thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all in authority. All in authority. This is what she was getting at. All in authority that we may lead, live peaceful and quiet lives in all righteousness and holiness. All right. This is good and pleases Elohim, our Savior. Here it is calling Yeshua, Elohim, who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. All right. And he'll deal with knowledge of the truth he is talking about. When, when he said for kings and all in authority as related to delegated authority, right here, when he said all most people leave out the leaders within the congregation. Because when he said kings, you had secular kings who were dealing with Elohim's people. Y'all seeing this? And when he went to all who were in authority, he was primarily making reference to those whom he had delegated authority to. Most of the time it shifted over to secular authority, to pray for the president, pray for the governor. The governor and president ain't saved. The only prayer I can pray for them is salvation, being saved. And he's going to uh, qualify that in verse 5. For there is one uh, Elohim, one media, Yeshua, between Elohim and mankind, the man, Yeshua, Messiah, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time and for this purpose. So what he is saying as it relates to the secular people in authority you pray for them too that salvation would come to them. He, he, I mean, that's the only thing we could do. And the prayer here is not primarily just like Roman Yom 13 for the secular authority. The primary reason here is on behalf of the people. So the leaders who are operating in delegated authority in governmental ministry within the congregation, pray for them so that they they that they uh, feed the flock properly so that they handle the people of Elohim properly so they watch over their soul. It's a lot in this, but most times it's approached from a religious teaching base saying that, well, we got to pray for the king, pray for those in authority. And you forget about your own people. So now this delegated authority he's talking about is not what we're talking about uh, in the uh, those that basic concept of receiving our dominion back. All of us have authority. And all through the scripture, he said, pray for everybody. That's why he said, first of all, petition, prayers, intercession, giving thanks be made for all people, everybody. And don't leave out, don't leave out the, the king that is 
uh, dealing with you as a result of your disobedience. It never was the will of the father to have a king ruling his people. He is the king. It was his will for a shepherd to govern and manage his people. Okay, now let's go back to our notes because that teaching is in our prayer study guide, Kingdom Concepts. Uh, uh, what's, what's the name of the book? Kingdom Concepts? <laughs> I write them, y'all put them together. <laughs> okay, all right, let's go back to the notes. All right, now, point number one. Elohim, we got two points with point number five. Elohim cannot be blamed for the condition of the world on earth. Yokonah, uh, on 10, 10. Before you go there, I mentioned Romans 13. Now I got to go there. Yes, we, yes, I'll do the Holy Spirit. Go to Romans 13, and then we're going to look at Ephraim 4 and, and uh, 10. Romans 13 and 1, then Ephraim 4, and we're going to come back here. Real quick. Real quick. All right. All right, come on, reader. Now, before they read, the, here's the book, Kingdom Keys to Effective Prayer. Kingdom Keys to Effective Prayer. Get this book. I got keys in here. I got principles in here. You can study. It's a study guide. It's not wrote for you to be lazy with it. I gave you some, some, some principles, some, some keys. You can go through and pull the keys out, and you get every prayer that you pray answered. Believe me, it works. Okay, now, uh, read uh, 13 and 1, please. Let everyone be subject. I'm sorry. Thank you. Let everyone. Okay, you can get it straight. Give me another reader. Come on, read. Okay. Let, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which Elohim has established. The authorities that exist have been established by Elohim. Hold up. Now, that's not correct. That is not correct. And I'm going to prove to you that is not correct. Look at uh, about all authority. And all authority has been established. That means that he delegated directly authority to everyone who has authority. That has everything to do with point number five. He will not violate his delegated authority. We teach him why prayer is necessary. Now go to FEM 10. I mean 4 and 10. Let's look at this, 4 and 10, and then there's another one in 1 and like 24. All right, now at FEM 4, uh, let me see where I want to be at. 6 and 10, I'm sorry, 6 and 10, 6 and 10. There we go. All right, read. Finally, be strong in Yahweh and his mighty power. Keep reading. Go all the way through verse. Uh, just read to tell you to stop. Okay. Put the full armor of Elohim so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All right. Now, did it did did he not say against the authorities, the powers of this dark world? The father did not delegate evil authority. And he's letting us know that there's evil in authority. So all authority doesn't come from him. Now look at same book one. And around verse 20, FEM 1 and 20. Let's go in here. May I ask a question about this verse? Sure. Okay, so um, in that verse about the... Go back to the verse, please. About the authorities and the principalities. Mm. Is it true that the word government used to be in there, but it was taken out when King James translated... Well, what it is, is different, trans you can pull up different translations, they're going to give you different things. Like, pull up the living uh, translation. Pull up the living translation. Okay. Now, he, he says, but against evil rulers and authority of the unseen world. Now, look at 
uh, the King James Version. Okay. Where is it? Principalities, powers against. Now, okay, we see the different trans. Let me take that down because I don't like looking at the Greek stuff. All right, you 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 see there are different uh, translations, but when you study that word out, when you go in and study that word out, it's going to make reference. Uh, you remember the scripture over in Matthew, Yahoo, uh, uh, when Yeshua said, I give you keys to the kingdom. Then he said, the, the gates of hell won't prevail. That word gate should be authority or government. It's the same thing here, the, what you asking about that. The, and when you trace these words in the Hebrew, because Sheo was not speaking English nor Greek. When you trace the word for authorities or government, you're going to get Hades. You see gates and you see how this translated. And he simply talk about these evil spirits that are operating in the authority that Adam gave up to them. Now, uh, FAM, now let's go to one. And it, it, you have different what you call ranks, military terms. Shay O was using military terms when he was expressing the thought here. Uh, principalities, principalities, uh, authorities rulers all of these are a mimic of the host of heaven army the armies of heaven that's why we be stressing that we don't do spiritual warfare we don't fight spiritual battles because we are not malakams our name uh we are not malakams aka angels see the translation for angels is messengers but M michael this rank of angel of malakams He's not a messenger. He is a fighter, you see, and that's what he does. So heaven have a army and provide protection to its citizens, you see. So in the military, when I signed up for the military, they told me I was no longer a citizen. I was citizen. I was government property. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. No, no, you are not. Your name is not Michael. You're not in heaven. You're a citizen. In the kingdom of heaven. All right. So that's again is religion. Now go to FEM one, but I hope I get the question there. But what you do, you fill through kingdom concepts and see how it was dealt with in the Tanakh. Now go to verse 17. Uh one and 17. We're gonna pick up reading there. Uh one and 17. Let me see. Do I wanna uh let's go uh just start reading. And this actually is another guideline uh, to pray, to use to pray. Yeshua taught, that's our primary. This is based off what, how Yeshua taught them to pray. Start reading at 17. I keep asking that Elohim of our Yahweh, Yeshua, the Messiah, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Keep reading. I'll tell you to I, stop. I pray that the mind of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people, and his in, incomparably great power for us who believe. The, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised the Messiah from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Okay, right hand is making reference to authority. Chief authority, period. The same authority that he possessed when he left that authority in the country, the place of heaven, and came to earth as a man. He laid that down. Okay, go ahead. Okay, which script I started reading? He appointed and seat him at his right hand in the heavenly Right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority. All rule, all what? Authority, all power, all dominion. 
You see, now I studied this out already. And again, he's going back to this military structure and these different demons that's occupying positions the same way they know that heaven had different uh, Malachim's occupying position in the, in, in, in the uh, army of heaven. Different one, they do different things. So you got rule, authority, got power, you got dominion. And then every authority that is invoked, not only this present age, but that also which is to come, saying that Yeshua, the, the authority that he is operating in now is the same authority he had previous to coming here. And that means everything throughout eternity is being subject to him. And Elohim had placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the holy nation, which is his congregation, the full of him who feel everything in every way. So the uh, evil authorities, the father did not delegate these rulers and dominions and 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 authorities, the father didn't give them nothing. He gave it to man. All authorities didn't come from uh, uh, Elohim. These authorities that he's making reference to on earth came from man. See, the point is he won't violate his delegated authority. This is why the father won't attack them. It's our responsibility to petition heaven and use our dominion to handle them. As always, thank you so much for tuning in or joining us in person. Remember, honored guests are always welcome on any platform and especially in person. Thank you so much and shalom, y'all.